Hey, what's up? I'm Keegan Boss, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Congratulations on, on last night with Songland. Um, Thank you so much, man. What, what did this mean to you, being able to be on that stage in front of in front of these amazing songwriters and not only being able to perform for them, but also being able to get their input and technically kind of like rewriting this track uh, all together. Like, what was that like for you? Dude, it was electric. I loved every second of it, man. It was uh, just all in all a great experience. Everybody affiliated with the show period, behind the scenes people, they're all amazing. So uh, just from the get-go, they make you feel really... Uh, welcome really special and at home so uh yeah man going into the room initially and, and singing the song was just a whirlwind of emotions for me i wasn't super nervous about the performance aspect itself i was mostly nervous just about like whether julia was actually gonna like the song or not because the way everything played out for me was sort of i sent in a ton of songs to songland submission thing and, and then they responded and they were like hey we really like this song glad you came we want you to pitch it to Julia Michaels. And uh, when they told me that, I was like, okay, like, of course I'll do it. But I really didn't see that song for Julia Michaels, you know what I mean? And so that was the biggest thing for me going in was just kind of, hey, is she going to really like this? And so uh, luckily enough, man, she connected with the melodies and the cadences. So uh, I was able to go into the studio, work with Ryan Tedder, which is, I mean, a dream come true, man. That's crazy. Especially for me, I grew up... Um, since I've been songwriting, I, I've never co-written before. I've always just been by myself in my bedroom. So my first co-write was with Ryan Tedder. Like, that's pretty that's pretty insane, man. Um, so, yeah, it was just a great, great experience from top to bottom. And then, of course, I mean, I couldn't be happier with the way everything played out in the end. Uh, Julia decided to, to cut the song was just the cherry on top of an amazing, amazing experience. Talk to me about how you got from uh, Glad You Came to Give It To You. Like, how did um, that writing session, how did it kind of create this new song that you did? Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, after I sang the song and, you know, on, on the show, you got to watch them kind of bounce ideas around. Julia made the comment, like, that it was pretty much going to have to be a lyric rewrite from top to bottom if she was going to, if it was going to work for her. And I was totally totally cool with that i kind of went into it expecting that especially like i said you know i didn't really see the song for her so i knew that on the slight chance that she did want me to go to the studio it was going to take a lot of work and um <laughs> so i think first steps was just kind of finding the things that she did connect to in the song and trying to bring those out and then fix the rest of the stuff that she wasn't crazy about which was lyrics um so I, it was cool because it, it was less of a, okay, let's find these little tweaks thing and more of like, all right, let's write a song for Julia Michaels. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was honestly, I mean, I feel like kind of a different experience from what some of the other episodes have been, you know, where it's usually like, Hey, let's, there's a few little things here and there. Let's tweak this, try and make this pop, change the production here. It was like, all right, you, I got lucky being able to even go into this studio video uh at all to work on this thing so like let's give it the best shot that we have instead of trying to just fix it we, let's just score julia so um yeah it was it was great man i love that you brought uh austin to to kind of present the new version of the song i honestly man i fell in love with austin and the, and the song like i felt in love with her voice with that song i felt like it was perfect uh, you know, what was your mindset behind bringing Austin in to perform the song with you? Yeah, definitely. So that was a decision um, we made. Me and Ryan were working on the song up until like the day of pitting it. And um, so that morning, Ryan called me. He was like, hey, man, I, you know, we were working on the song and we had cut a few demos and they were like really high. It, it didn't sound like comfortable for a guy to sing. Uh, and so he was like, I've got this girl, it's Austin. And I think that she would be great to sing this song just to pitch because I want Julia to be able to kind of picture herself singing it. I don't want it to be too much of a stretch for her. And I, I mean, she 
killed it. Austin was fantastic. So, um, yeah, that was kind of a, a quick decision. I don't think that one was one that had to be mulled over too much. It was kind of like, hey, I think this is the best decision. And I was like, yeah, I agree. I think that that's going to give the, the song the best the best chance at, uh, at Julia cutting it. So, um, Ryan Tedder knows what he's doing, man. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> I don't think, uh, anybody's doubting his ability to make good decisions as a songwriter and, and pitching songs. What did you learn from this experience? Like how, uh, how do you feel you perfected your songwriting now that you kind of got to see how these, you know, big songwriters kind of do it? Yeah, absolutely. I am, uh, very long way away from perfecting my songwriting but um man i did i learned so much in this experience just being able to be in the room with them like right after pitching it they had these ideas immediately one of the big things for me to take away just in trying to learn how to co-write because that's a, kind of a new uh new thing for me and so w- what i a big thing that i took away is like don't be afraid to make suggestions like even if they may not seem like what's going to be the final thing, every suggestion doesn't have to be perfect. You know what I mean? It's just like make mistakes if you have to, to get to the final product, that's going to be the best. And so I think that was something that I learned a lot um, just as far as that side of things goes. And also just, uh, I kind of, I knew this already, but it was just very, it re it restated it for me just that, Songwriting is a very moldable thing, I guess, because, you know, we went in with this one song and then came out with a, com- a completely different song. And so just that openness to be like, you know what, if this is the best thing for the song, be okay with that. It's, it's not about you. It's about the song. You know what I mean? So that was like a, that was definitely something to, take away from it man i mean there's so many things though that i can't even count as far as just lessons learned because i mean i I was i go from being a kid in my bedroom in alabama and to being in front of these amazing the best songwriters in the world and julia michaels was ridiculous and so um dude every every second of it was a lesson you know it was just trying to soak up everything that i could now, I got to admit, when you first came out and performed the original song, Glad You Came, um, instantly I was like, I hope this guy is not just a songwriter. I hope he's also a singer because you have an incredible voice. Um, and sure oh, enough, you, sure enough, you played your cards right and you just released Where We Are um, EP right around the same time as this premiere. And like that was brilliant, by the way. But um, talk to me about this EP and the creative process behind it. And who are you yeah. on this EP? Dude, thank you so much. I haven't had anybody ask me about that today. So I'm super proud of the project. Uh, it's called Where We Are. Um, basically, I wanted to write, it's kind of a, um, uh, like a concept album sort of deal. I wanted to write something that was sort of like the timeline of a relationship from start to finish. So if you listen to the tracks in order, uh, it's In This Life, Darling, What Love Is, backwards and then where we are so in this light is kind of like that first moment in the relationship so like attraction so the, like the chorus is saying like tell me why i've never seen you in this light so like the realization of like hey i like this person and then number two is darling so that one's kind of like the hot and heavy part of the relationship the infatuation sort of stage and then number three is what love is which is just that like head over heels like Hey, I, I love you. The first line in the song is I'd kiss you till my lungs give out. So just like, no matter what, we're going to, we're going to be in game. Uh, and then number four is kind of the fallout. So it's called backwards. So the hook is now we're walking backwards, moving in slow motion. I'm falling for you in reverse. And so it's like, Hey, I, I'm kind of falling out of love. And then, uh, the fifth and final song is called where we are. And so it's just kind of this, um, reflective point everything's over with and it's like asking the question like what do you say when it's over where do you go when you're this far do you know how we get closure do you know how we landed where we are so um i encourage people to listen to it from start to finish i think it sometimes it hurts me when people just hit shuffle play on albums because i think that (laughs) artists put a lot of thought into the uh the track list on stuff yeah and so yeah man thank you for asking that really means a lot um (laughs) I'm, i'm super excited about it so yeah 
That's it. When are you going to drop the short film that goes with this EP? Because I feel like you have to I, at this point. <laughs> right? That's it, man. I need to do that. That And kind of, I think that goes along with what I was saying on Songman about how, um, like, I kind of think of myself as a fiction writer because I'm super happily right. married. You know what I mean? I don't, I, I'm not falling out of love, but, you know, to be able to kind of just come up with these stories right from the perspective of, like somebody who would write a screenplay or something like that. So I hope that that's reflected when people listen to it. I hope they're able to kind of pick up on that. Now, why, why did you initially start writing like a fiction, uh, like a fictional artist? Is it, you know, that vulnerability of being able to open up and talk about your own personal stories, or you just kind of didn't want to connect to the songs as much in case it went to someone else since you are a songwriter as well? Yeah, I'd say it's definitely both. I'd say part of it was just necessity. Um, mm. I'm young, I'm 20. And so uh, lack of life experience, lack of things to write about necessarily, I had to kind of get creative with it and just sort of come up with stuff. Um, and I don't think that I'm the only person who does that. I think, you know, all writers do that to an extent. But for me, it's kind of um, most of the songs that I write are that. You know what I mean? I can count on one hand the songs that I've written or that are actually about like my life experience. Um, so part of it's that, and then part of it is definitely just the aspect of, like a song that was a great example of a song that I wasn't emotionally connected to, so it wasn't hard for me to be like, yeah, let's throw the lyrics in the trash and start over. So um, definitely a, a combination of the two, for sure. Right, and I feel like if you're going to be a songwriter, you know, for this industry, I feel like you have to be okay with having to rewrite stuff. If, you know, Dua Lipa wants to rewrite some verses or, you know, Ryan Tedder wants to rewrite some verses. Um, yeah. So it's, it's kind of good that you, you're getting comfortable with that now because I'm sure you're going to start getting busier after this. Man, I hope so. That is, uh, I definitely hope so. Like I said, you know, we're moving out to, to Los Angeles and it's kind of a crazy time right now, but once everything gets back to normal, I, I, um, I hope that I'm busy.